Okay, so let's continue our discussion. Until now, we learned how to, let's say, locate a facility with rectilinear distances, with minisum objective, and with minimax objectives. But for the minimax objective, there was a special case that we considered in which all the weights were identical. Okay. If it is not identical, there is no such easy way to find it. Uh, you need to, for example, what you can do is you can write this model, linearize it, and give it to Excel solver or CPLEX to get the optimal solution. But the other method, you can still solve that uh, when the weights are identical. You can still solve it with an optimization solver. Uh, but the thing is, this method is much more easier. It's a very easy procedure. After completing our discussion with the rectilinear distance, now let's move on to a different type of distance matrix. matrix. Um, and I'm going to explain this with an example. So assume that all of us are now using these mobile phones, right? And our mobile phones are connected to the network using the so-called base stations. And the base stations are usually uh, located certain uh, places, uh, especially higher places, as a tower. And it is just, uh, it is an antenna so that it, uh, let's say, sends signals around. Okay, these signals reach outside, let's say. And then when we have this mobile phone with us, it takes the signal and connects with this base station so that we, your signal goes to the satellite and then to the other person's base station and to that one and etc. What we are interested here is this. The strength of the signal from our phone uh, taking the signal from this base station depends on the distance between our mobile phone and the base station. But of course, this uh, distance is the straight line distance, right? Not Euclidean or something else. But the thing is, the strength of the signal depends on the distance, I mean, too much. It is proportional, inversely proportional, usually with the square of the straight line distance, not it is inversely proportional with the distance, but it is with the square of the distance. So if you are closer to the base station, your signal will be too much. If you move one step further, then the signal strength will be reduced by the square of the distance. In this case, of course, you will not be using the Euclidean distance, but you will be using the squared Euclidean distance. Okay, so our next problem will be the squared Euclidean distance. And actually, this is usually uh, valid for, for example, communication towers or radars and etc. For this squared Euclidean distance, uh, we, will, we can identify the optimum location still easy, easily. Uh, and we will be learning how to find this one. But let me first summarize what we have. Uh, the problem with the Euclidean distances can be single or multi-facility location problems. Okay, It can be a minisum problem or a minimax problem with Euclidean. Okay, So this, when the distance or let's say the strength of the signal uh, is related with the square of the Euclidean distance and we want to minimize the sum of these, let's say, squared Euclidean distances. This problem is called the gravity problem. It is, we usually, I mean, consider this problem for only single facility or let me say, we have a solution procedure which is easy and we can implement it only for the single facility problem. If it is multi-facility problem, this solution procedure that we will be learning is not valid and you need to develop or use another method. Okay? If the problem is 
regular Euclidean, not the squared one, but it is regular Euclidean, we can consider this problem for single or multi facilities. But the, there is an important problem with this version because you see the square Euclidean distance has such a function. Let's say it is x minus a i square plus y minus b i square and square root. And we are taking the summation over all existing facilities. This is the Euclidean distance. And this function over here, which includes the squares of the decision variables and the square roots of the decision variables, actually, it is not linear. And you need to use a nonlinear solver. You cannot use Cplex, for example, for this problem. You need to use a nonlinear solver to solve it. It is a more complex version of the problem. Actually, there is a method, there is an algorithm to find the optimum location for single facility case. But we will not be going into that detail in this course. Okay, if the problem is Euclidean and minimax location, again, this problem version can be used for single and multi-facility location problems. But again, for this problem, we don't have an easy to use a solution procedure. You need to use the solvers. Again, it needs to be solved by nonlinear solvers. Okay, so let's consider uh, the squared Euclidean mini sum location problem, which is called the gravity problem. Uh, why do we have such a squared Euclidean distance? As I told you, in some cases, the costs or distances or the strength of the signal increases exponentially with the square of the distance traveled. But also, we can use this solution of the squared Euclidean problem when we obtain that coordinate. We can use it as a starting point for solving the Euclidean problem. It can be a starting point. And also, we can use that solution uh, to obtain a bound for the Euclidean problem. We will be discussing what is a bound and how we can obtain it. Okay, but now let's consider uh, how we can or what is the solution procedure. First of all, we need to write our objective function. Okay, the objective function for the squared Euclidean distance is this one. As you can see, the only difference with squared Euclidean and Euclidean is we don't have this squared root, square root. If you have square root, it's the Euclidean problem. If you take the square of it and remove that, this uh, square root, then uh, it is the squared Euclidean problem. And again, uh, we should be able to write this compact form in open form easily. Let me write it for uh, very is a very small example. Let's assume that P1 has coordinates of 2 and 3 with W1, the weight of this one equals to 2, and P2 has a coordinate of 5 and 4 with W2 equals to, let's say, 1. And what do we do uh, to write this objective function? It will be W1, which is 2 times x minus 2 square, let me write it in parentheses, plus uh, y minus 3 square plus, okay, for the second one, w2 is equal to 1, 1 times x minus 5 square plus uh, y minus 4 square. Okay, so this is the objective function that we want to minimize if the given or existing facilities are these. It is the open form of this closed form demonstration. Actually, the solution that we can obtain the solution quite easily because, you know, when we take the square of this problem uh, from this open form, it is valid. Uh, you can see it. Uh, look, what happens if I multiply these two, if I open this parenthesis? So it will be, let me write it. Uh, it will be 2 times x minus 2 square plus 2 times y minus 3 square. And similarly, this one, when I multiply it, your objective function will return on to this one. And look, this is x's 
and these are y's and as you can see they are independent like in the rectilinear case which means that I can separate this into two parts in which first I will minimize the x version which is 2x minus 2 square plus x minus 5 square and then add it to the other part which is minimization of 2 minus y mi uh, 2 times y minus 3 square plus y minus 4 square so actually I have this minimization problem and this minimization problem and from simple calculus it is just calculus I am trying to optimize this objective function with a single variable what you can do you can take the derivative with respect to x and make it equal to zero and in order to find the optimal y value just take the derivative with respect to y and make it equal to zero so actually the solution uh, is for this problem is uh, obtained by taking the uh, first by um, separating the problem into two for the x variable and y variables and for each one taking the derivative and making it equal to zero and at the end simply you will obtain a very familiar form of the problem uh, for the optimal coordinates and that familiar form is this one so the optimal x coordinate is equal to this okay when you look at such a formula at the beginning it seems to be very complex very difficult to understand but actually it is not look what we are doing we are multiplying the weight of a facility with its x coordinate and adding these okay, add up for all and then divide that value by the sum of all weights look at y what we do we multiply the weight of a facility with its y coordinate and then we add these for all facilities for all existing facilities and divide it by the total weight and if you look this denominator in both equations are the same it is the sum of the weights and actually it is a very simple uh, formula and this will you this will give you the centroid uh, let me write it here it's called centroid solution so it will be the centroid of the existing facilities of the shape that uh, covers the existing facilities it is the gravity problem because of this reason it will be the center of gravity okay the name comes actually from the solution from the result okay let's solve an example to understand it better so this is the same example that we solved in the rectilinear problem and let's solve let's consider that in this case we don't have rectilinear we don't have rectilinear distances but we have squared euclidean distances okay there are five facilities that their coordinates are given the weights of these uh, facilities are given and the question is find the optimum location for the new machine how can we find it actually it is very easy look you don't need to memorize any formula or any calculation what do we do multiply the weight by the first x coordinate so i'm trying to find x star okay the optimal x coordinate 10 times 1 this is weight of uh, first facility multiplied by x coordinate of the first facility plus weight of the second facility 20 multiplied by the x coordinate of the second facility third one fourth one fifth one okay this is this is actually summation of wi times ai and then we divide it by the sum of all weights so it is 10 look the first weight is 10 plus 20 25 20 and 25 
So this is actually, the second part is summation of weights. And this formula gives you the optimal x star. And do the same thing for optimal y star. So what is we, what we will be changing in this formula to obtain y is, so let me write y star here. And you will be changing this x coordinate with y coordinate. For the first facility, y coordinate is the same with the x. For the second one, y coordinate is equal to 2. For the third one, y coordinate is 8. Fourth one, it is 6. And fifth one, it is 4. And when you do the calculation, the same calculation, by, by using the y coordinates, you will obtain the optimal y coordinate. Okay, so this is the coordinates of the existing facilities. These are the weights uh, of these facilities. And optimal x coordinate, if you do the calculation, it will be 4.4. And optimal y coordinate, it will be 4.7. This is the solution. And okay, let me give uh, talk about another uh, important result for squared Euclidean distances. So let's say this is the xy coordinate system. And this is 4.4, which is the optimal x coordinate. And this is 4.7, which is the optimal y coordinate. So we will locate our facility here. Now remember, in the rectilinear case, uh, we learned the procedure to sketch these uh, contour lines, isocost contour lines. For this one, you can also sketch the isocost contour lines. If this facility, you cannot locate this facility to this location, then how can you identify the alternative locations? But in this case, it is extremely easy because you don't need to do anything because the isocost lines are just uh, lines co uh, we call concentric lines around uh, this optimal so they are just circles around this optimal like this so you don't need to do, find any slope or anything just these are the isocost lines okay and actually this remark over here tells you that the contour lines for this problem are concentric circles around the optimum location. If the optimum location is not feasible, then you will select the closest feasible location to the optimal location for locating your facility. That's it. Okay. I'm going to solve another example for this problem. The, uh, this is a simple example. As you can see, there are only three facilities. Their coordinates, x, y coordinates are given and the weights are given. So how do we find the optimum location using the squared Euclidean, squared Euclidean distance? Okay, so what do we do? First of all, in order to find x star, optimal x star, we need to multiply the weight of the first facility by its x coordinate plus weight of the second facility by its x coordinate and weight of the third facility by its x coordinate and this will be your numerator. And in the denominator, you will be simply adding these weights. And this will give you your optimal x coordinate, which will be, if you do the calculation, 443.49. This is the optimal x coordinate. What about optimal y coordinate? It will be, again, multiplication of these weights with the y coordinates. And in the denominator, you will have your weights, 2300. And if you do this calculation, you will obtain 
627.89 as your optimal y coordinate. So this is x star and this is y star. And if you want to calculate the optimal objective function value corresponding to this one, you need to plug in these values in your objective function. Okay? So what is your ob optimal objective function? Let me write it here. Uh, so for the first facility the weight is this much multiplied by okay, x which is x of the new facility minus the x coordinate squared plus uh, y coordinate of the new facility minus y coordinate of the first existing facility squared plus for the second one, it will be 1900 multiplied by x coordinate of the new facility minus the x coordinate of the existing facility. Then y coordinate of the new facility minus y coordinate of the existing facility. And for the last one, it is 2300 and this thing. Okay? So this will be your. Uh, optimal objective function value. I will not uh, calculate that one. You can practice. You can do it. That calculation. It will be a good practice. Okay. Now let's consider the Euclidean case now. Not squared Euclidean, but the Euclidean distance, and with the mini sum objective. Okay, so as I told you, in this case, we have a problem because we have the square root. If we write your our objective function, it will be minimization of this function where, okay, we have the for the first facility square root. So the square root is represented by this one over two here, square root of this one. And we will be taking the sum of it. Okay, again, writing it in open form uh, will be beneficial for understanding. So what if we have, let's say, first facility, then for the first facility, V1 times square root of X minus A1 square plus Y minus B1 square. And then plus W2 times Okay, square root of x minus a2 square plus y minus b2 square. And you will do this addition for all facilities, uh, all existing facilities. And because of this square root, it, uh, it is nonlinear and linear programming solvers or integer linear programming solvers will not be able to solve this problem. You need a nonlinear solver. Actually, Excel solver can solve, can handle such nonlinear problems, uh, but it is limited. You know, the free version is limited. You can use other nonlinear solvers to solve this problem. But there are some special cases of this problem. And let's concentrate on this. The first special case is this. When the PIs are collinear, when PIs, remember these are existing facilities, are lying at the same line. Uh, okay, now let me see. Uh, when they are collinear, when they are lying on the same line, so let's assume this is the coordinate system f, x, and y, and then assume that p1 is here, p2 is here, p3 is here. So assume that they are lying on this line for which this has an equation, let's say ax plus b, something like this. If that is the case, then the problem turns into rectilinear. Okay? If this is the case, then 
problem turns into rectilinear. Okay, now uh, it may be a little bit confusing how it returns into rectilinear or how we are going to solve it. Let me demonstrate it with a simple example. Look, why we are interested in these special cases? Because we know that in Euclidean problem, because of this square root thing, it is nonlinear and it is difficult to obtain a solution. But for these special cases, we still can find the optimal solution easily. Okay, now assume that pi is equal to a i and zero for all i. That is, the y i values are zero for all of them. What does it mean? So if this is your coordinate system x and y, all your facilities are located on your x-axis. Let's say this is your p1, this is your p2, this is your pn. Okay. In this case, let me write your object. Let me write the objective function, and the. I mean uh, Euclidean objective function. It is like this, right? I from 1 to m, there are m existing facilities. It will be wi multiplied by the square root of x minus ai square. Okay? y minus bi square. Should I write y minus bi square here? No, because all bi's are 0. And the thing is, when all of them are on the x-axis, your new facility can not be somewhere here or here or here here. It will be on the line segment also. It will be either here or here or here. So its y value will also be zero. So therefore, you don't need to write the y over here. Your problem is re returns into this one. And okay, square root of this square thing. We can change this one with x minus a i but if you just write x minus a i it is not correct it should be the absolute value of x minus a i and in this case it will be i from 1 to m w i x minus a i absolute value and what is this function it is just rectilinear right so because of this we say that uh, the problem turns into uh, the rectilinear. Okay, but this was the case when they are all in the x-axis. If, if they are all in the y-axis like this, of course, in that case, you will have y minus bi square. The same thing. But if they are on such a line segment, so let's assume that this line segment uh, have this formula. Uh, let me represent this by, uh, because we are representing the x coordinates of the existing facilities with ai and y coordinates with bi. So I'm going to represent this one as cx plus d, to not to confuse. Let's assume that we have such a line and all existing facilities are on this line. Okay? Then, look. If this is the AI coordinate of an existing facility, A1, let's say, then this will be B1. But how can we represent B1 in, uh, in terms of A1 using this equation? Yes. So what is it? B1 is equal to C times A1 plus D. It's like this because of this equation, because it is on the line segment. If the X value is A1, just put A1 here and you will obtain the Y coordinate, which is this one. Similarly, let's assume that this is another one. So for each facility BI, it is C times A i plus D. So actually, my coordinates are not, uh, I can represent them as 
AI and instead of BI I can write C times AI plus D. So these are the coordinates of the existing facilities. Then let me write my objective function uh, for the Euclidean problem. Okay, it will be summation i from 1 to m wi times okay, x minus a i square plus it is y minus b i square, right? But what is y? y is, look again from here, what is y? It is cx plus d so this is y minus bi and what is bi it is cai plus d so let me write it in parentheses like this square and all of them i need to take the square root okay so let's concentrate on the second part what we can do is we can write in parentheses of c x minus a i okay square here and what about d so d minus d d this just disappears so what do i have i have w i x minus a i square plus c x minus a i square and square root and as you can see these two terms are uh, what they are common so I can combine them in the same parenthesis so it will be x minus a i square then 1 plus c and the square root so what is 1 plus c it is just a constant c is a constant and we can take the square root of it and actually this appears to be w i times square root of c plus 1 times and what is the remaining part it is the square root of this square which comes out as an absolute value which is x minus a i and i am just taking this summation i from 1 to m and what is this v i times x i it is rectilinear what is this c plus 1? It is just a constant. You just find the rectilinear solution and multiply it by square root of c plus 1. That's it. So with this calculation, we learn that if the existing facilities are on the same line, which means they are collinear, then we can solve the Euclidean problem as rectilinear problem. And the new facility will also be on the line segment itself. Okay, this is the first spatial case when PIs are collinear. Let's consider the second spatial case. Okay, we are still considering Euclidean distances, but all existing facilities have equal weights. I'm not saying all of them are one. I'm not saying all of them are two. I'm saying that all of them are equal. Okay. So how can we find this optimal solution? Simply, I will demonstrate uh, two uh, versions of it. Uh, if we have four existing facilities, four existing facilities with equal weights. Where is the optimal solution? How do we find it? So let's assume that this is your first existing facility. This is the second one. This is the third one. And this is the fourth one. Okay. Then in order to find the optimal location of the new facility for this case, just combine these facilities with each other so that um, when you combine the existing uh, when you pair these existing facilities and sketch a line segment, they intersect. Okay, this is a little bit confusing what I am saying, I know, but it is not. Look, I need to pair the existing facilities with each other. 
So for example, I can pair this one and this one. But if I do that, these two line segments doesn't intersect. Okay? So what should I do? Again, if you if I pair them like this, again these two lines doesn't intersect. But what should I do? I should pair this one and with this and this one with this so that they intersect in the uh, at their midpoint somewhere somehow, okay? And then this intersection point is your optimum location. Okay? So if there are four existing facilities with equal weights, just pair them so that the intersection of the lines is in the in between them and if that is the case it will be your optimum location. Okay. But if there is uh, more than four existing facilities how can you find okay more or even if it is four or less you can still use this procedure more existing facilities okay so what you can do assume we want to locate a new let's say a facility in Muscat. So take a table. This is our, let's say, table. These are the legs of the table. And then put the map of Muscat on this table. Okay? This is the map of Muscat. And then identify the existing facilities on this map let's say this is one existing facility this is another this is another this is another and etc okay then what you do we you just stick this map to the table and then drill holes on the table on these existing facilities drill holes okay so in order to find the optimum location you need to spare one table okay after drilling holes you find a ring let's say like this one and then connect some ropes to this ring and put those ropes inside these holes remember these holes are on existing facilities so the ropes are now coming down this table because they, there are holes and put some weights uh, to these ropes and remember these uh, weights uh, actually even if the weights are not different and uh, not same but different you can use this procedure so what you can do you can put a weight uh, in proportion of their uh, respective weights so for example if v1 is equal to 1 and v2 is equal to 2 and etc so you can say that this weight is 1 kilogram and this weight is 2 kilograms and etc okay and then leave this rope empty, uh, free what will this system do the weights will pull this ring towards themselves and at a certain point it will be uh, let's say on balance and the location where this ring stays on at balance is your optimum location. Okay, so finding the optimum location for the Euclidean distance problem without a mathematical way, but by sparing uh, a table is this easy. You need a map, you need a table, and you need a ring and some ropes. With that one, you can obtain the optimum solution. Okay. So, last topic that we will cover for continuous facility location problem will be again related to the Euclidean minisum problem. And we will be learning some bounds. Uh, we will be obtaining some bounds for the Euclidean minisum problem. Again, 
Why do we need bounds? Because this problem, Euclidean mean sum problem, uh, is mathematically a little bit more complex than the others because of this square root thing. If you don't want to solve it to optimality, you can still obtain some good solutions and uh, learn uh, or discuss its performance. So when I send, say, a bound, I'm referring to this. Remember, uh, we want to calculate the object, optimal objective function value of the Euclidean problem, which let me represent by f, uh, let me represent in this y, way, f x star and y star. Okay, this is the optimal objective function value of the Euclidean problem. Then, if we can find some value so that this optimal location is always greater than or equal to, let's say, this a. And if we can find another value so that this optimal objective function is always less than or equal to this b, then we can call this a and b as the bounds. So a is named as the lower bound. Remember from the branch and bound algorithm. And B is referred as the upper bound. What does a lower bound mean? It means that this optimal objective function value will never be less than A. And an upper bound means that the optimal objective function value will never be larger than B, greater than B. And actually for this problem, we have such lower or we can identify such lower and upper bounds and let me represent those lower and upper bounds for you okay so assume that this x star and y star represents the optimal euclidean solution then I'm going to represent this F1 star and F2 star. And what are they for? They are the optimal values of the rectilinear subproblems. Okay, what does it mean, rectilinear subproblems? We are considering the Euclidean problem. But to obtain a lower bound for the Euclidean problem, we will be, we need the optimal solution of the rectilinear problems. And when I say subproblems, remember in rectilinear case, we divided the problem into two parts. We solved the optimal x coordinate and we solved the optimal y coordinate separately. So these are the two subproblems. And for x1, look, this is not x star. This is not the optimum x coordinate of the rectilinear problem. This f lan star is the objective function value of corresponding to this x. And this f2 is the objective function value corresponding to y, which is the uh, subproblem uh, on the y coordinate for the rectilinear case. Okay, I will solve an example to be more clear on this. And assume that this x and y, other than this x star and y star, this x and y is any point, any point. It can be, for example, the rectilinear solution, or it can be the centroid solution, which we obtain from the squared Euclidean problem. It can be any solution. Then if this is the case, we know that this f1 star squared, let me write in this way, plus f2 star squared, and then square root of this, like we are finding the Euclidean distance, less than or equal to the optimal objective function value of the Euclidean problem, this is what we are interested in. This is our interest. And it is less than or equal to 
the objective function value, Euclidean objective function value of this any point. This fxy, remember, it can be the rectilinear solution or the centroid solution. Okay, so how can we make use of this lower bound? Let me explain it with an example. And with an example, this formula altogether will be much clear. Okay, let's consider this problem. There are four existing facilities. Their coordinates are given. Their weights are given. Okay. And we want to find the optimal uh, Euclidean coordinates. The problem is Euclidean mean sum problem. But the thing is, it's complex. We don't know how to find it. We don't want to spare our table. We don't want to drill holes on our table. We don't have a map. We want to solve it mathematically, but we don't know how to solve it. Then what we can do? First of all, find the rectilinear solution. Find the rectilinear solution. Okay, but how shall we find the rectilinear solution? Remember the procedure. Find, first of all, find the optimal, I mean rectilinear x coordinate. And in order to find it, I need to first order the existing facilities with respect to their x coordinates. Okay, so let me write um, P3, and then the x coordinate is 1, and the corresponding weight is 1 over two, 3, and then we have P1, coordinate is 4, and the weight is 1 over 6, then we have P2, x coordinate is 8, and weight is 1 over 3, and we have P4 with 13 and 1 over 6. Then find the sum of the weights, total weight. And what's it? It is 1. Okay. And then find one half of the sum of the weights. It is 0.5. Now I need to find the partial sum. This is nothing but the rectilinear solution. I'm just repeating that solution. Okay, partial sum, this is 1 over 3, it is less than 0.5, right? Then the second one, it is 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6, actually it makes 1 over 2, which is equal to 0.5, is it? And then we say that this is the first time that this facility, uh, this partial sum is equal to uh, let's say the uh, half of the weight so that this is the optimum rectilinear x coordinate but the thing is since this is exactly equal to this one I know that there is alternative optima and the alternative optima goes until next one so optimal x star is in this interval for an 8 and when you do the same thing for the y coordinate, just uh, order them according to their uh, y coordinates. So 2, 5, and 8 y coordinates and their corresponding weights 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6, 1 over 3, 1 over 3, 1 over 3. So this is less than half, this is greater than half. So we understand that optimal y coordinate is 5. Okay, we identified the optimal x and y coordinates. And we will be making use of this. So for x, since there are alternative optima, you need to select one of them. I mean, select on just one of them. You can select 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, anything. So for this example, I will be selecting, let's say, 8. x star 8, y star is equal to 5. Then, what do I need to do? I need to find f1 star by using 8 in the objective function. And what does it mean? This is the objective function of the rectilinear subproblem. Okay? So, what is, does it mean? I need to find 1 over 6 times 8 minus 4 absolute value plus 1 over 3 times 8 minus 8 
plus 1 over 3 times 8 minus 1 and plus 1 over 6 times 8 minus 13. This is, look, I use these x coordinates and the weights to obtain this objective function on x. And when you do this, you will see it makes 2.5. What else? I need the optimal value, objective function value corresponding to optimal y coordinate. And how do I do it? Again, 1 over 6 times 5 minus 2 plus 1 third of 5 minus 5 absolute value plus 1 third 5 minus 8 and plus 1 sixth 5 minus 2. And you will find 2 here. Okay. Now remember our bound formula. It was saying that square root of f1 star square plus f2 star square. And this is, uh, what does it equal to? It is 2.5 square plus 2 square. And it is 3.20156 and it goes. Okay. And we know that this is less than or equal to my optimal Euclidean objective function value. My op Euclidean objective function value will be greater than or equal to this. Okay, but on the other hand, we know that if you take any point, any point, so let's take 8 and 5 as the point and calculate it is Euclidean solution. How do we find it? It will be simply square root of 8 minus 4 square plus uh, what? 5 minus 2 square plus square root 8 minus 8 square plus 5 minus 5 square. Okay. Square root 8 minus 1 square plus 5 minus 8 square plus 8 minus 13 square plus 5 minus 2 square. So what is this? It is the objective function value corresponding to this point. And how do I obtain this point? I just use the rectilinear coordinates. But you don't need to use it. You can use any coordinate here, anything. And when you calculate it, we see that it appears to be 3.21937 and it goes. And what do we know? We know that optimal uh, Euclidean solution should be less than or equal to this one. Now combine, let's combine these two things. This one. And this one, what do we obtain? Let me write it to this empty space. 3.20156 is less than or equal to your optimal Euclidean, uh, your optimal, uh, let's say, Euclidean solution. And it is less than or equal to 3.21937. And look at how close these two values to each other. Look at them. They are very close to each other. So what does it mean? It means that, okay, if you cannot find the optimal Euclidean solution, but instead, if you just use this solution, 8, 5, maybe it is not the optimal solution, but use it, then your optimal, you are at most this much far away from that optimal solution. The optimal solution can be at least 3.201, and your current solution is 3.219. You are very close to that solution. You understand it immediately. Okay, this is the use of the bound. It is very helpful uh, in this situation. Okay, so if it is not the mini sum problem, but if it is the minimax problem, then we don't have a spatial solution technique. You just try to minimize the maximum of uh, this function, this is the Euclidean function. Again, you may have a fixed travel 
like in the rectilinear minimax problem. And again, you can use some kind of a nonlinear uh, solution uh, software to obtain this solution.